You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your old Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at TFYLP. So what's happened on this Easter weekend? I hope all my friends out in Transformer land got some sweet plastic in their Easter baskets this year, and I'm not talking about colored eggs. Due to the holiday weekend and the fact that it was generally a slow news week, this will be an abridged episode. I mean, we'll still give our usual on-the-shelf segment, but it doesn't really do much good when you can't really go to the store and check out those said shelves. Speaking of COVID-19, I'd like to give a friendly podcast listening suggestion to perhaps calm your nerves and give you some relatable do's and don'ts. Search for podcast Science Versus with Wendy Zuckerman. They've been pumping out short segments at a rapid pace to help answer questions like whether sanitizing your groceries is actually doing any good or not, and separating science facts from fiction. Subscribe to it wherever you consume excellent podcasts, like this one. That's enough with the PSAs, so let's talk about our latest reveals. No additional retailer exclusives were revealed this week after the Target 2 Packs of Terror announcement. But Japan made my eyebrows raise a bit when they announced that they will also be selling the Netflix-branded Siege Toys that are exclusive to Walmart in North America. Karatomi has opted to forego Hasbro's retailer exclusive route and will be releasing the Netflix decos under a brand new line aptly titled War for Cybertron, which if I had to guess will operate as some sort of greatest hits line for this entire arc of the Transformers toy line. Sporting new ID numbers WFC-01 and WFC-02, Decepticon Mirage and Hound are the first two figures announced, respectively. No packaging has been revealed yet, but history might dictate that there will be only slight modifications from the USA white box branding that we've already seen here in the States. The toys look to be unmodified in any way from the decos we've already seen, so only the most damaged of packaging completists need apply. These figures are destined for shelves in September of this year, and pre-orders are already available on a variety of importer websites. Takara Tomi Mall also put up their own exclusive photography assets for soon-to-be-released Earthrise figures, Double Dealer, Snapdragon, and the MicroMaster Racetrack Patrol, Roller Force, and Groundhog. There's nothing too spectacular here, except they went out of their way to highlight the faction-changing gimmick possessed by Double Dealer. These product shots are our first non-render images of Snapdragon and the Racetrack Patrol. Of note are the painted details within Snapdragon's cockpit and what appears to be the combined phaser mode for Groundhog and Roller Force. Eagle-eyed viewers can also spot the carrier mode for Deluxe Modulator Airwave as well. I know I glaze over the visual details a bit, this being an audio-only podcast and all, but you can see all this eye candy for yourself by visiting takaratomimall.jp. I've been waiting with bated breath for the announced reveal of MPM-10 on Monday, April 13th, 8 p.m. China time. Hasbro Asia posted the reveal time on their official Taobao store, and as of this recording, nothing has yet leaked. But after the sun comes up in the USA tomorrow, we should have a good look at the identity of this figure if you don't already know who it is. So just why haven't we seen this toy yet? The humans have taken it. We'll cover this toy in full next week after everyone's had a good scream about it. And one last tasty treat is that Hallmark's annual Transformer holiday ornament character will be G1 Jazz. This was clearly revealed at Toy Fair back in February, but many missed the news, including myself, 
bad, Mr. Starscream. The ornament will be up for sale on July 11th for $17.99. Lay it on me, man. Last week, I was getting moist over the reveal of the Takara Tomy Generation Selects Super Megatron and surmised that we may get a chance to purchase this item domestically via Hasbro Pulse. Lo and behold, the toy, identified as TT-GS09, was indeed put up for sale for US buyers for a modest price of 60 bucks. I just wanted to point out how great this is for us Yankees because the $60 USD price point is in line perfectly with the 6,000 yen price listed on Takara Tomy Mall. It only took till 2020, but we finally found a way to avoid paying the steep import markup. Don't be snoozing though, because the pre-order window is narrow. You only have a little over two weeks to shave $60 off that upcoming stimulus check and apply it to the order because pre-orders will be closed after that. Also, why does Super Megatron have a last night movie Megatron face? Hey, uh, can someone get John Warden on the line, please? No? Uh, okay. Okay, well, uh, next time, I guess. <laughs> We're all still shedding a tear for the late TF Con Orlando, but a glimmer of happiness came in the form of plastic therapy for those lucky enough to have purchased the Azalea and Docket from Ages 3 and Up or Toy Dojo. Some TF Talk staff members were pleased to share their deliveries of the special decos that were supposed to be revealed at the show. Look for a future Microcasters episode featuring one of these hot bots. And if you need a few more pieces of eye candy for a little pick-me-up up right about now, you can follow a new episode of the Trials and Tribulations of G1 Sound Barrier by following at Drivar on Twitter which is D-R-I-V-A-A-A-R. Yes, that's three A's and not two like I misspoke the last time. This time you can see what Sound Barrier got up to on Sherman Dam. Also, see some incredible animated pixel art by following Stan Chow. His Twitter tag is at artist Stan, and he's made some beautiful custom G1 commercial bumpers that are lo-fi pixel creations. It will brighten even the darkest of hearts. Well, thanks for tuning in to this abridged TF Talk News episode, and the Easter Bunny just dropped off some goodies for me. I didn't know Easter eggs showed up as big cardboard boxes that say BBTS all over them, though. But beggars can't be choosers. Stay safe out there, and look forward to an all-new TFYLP livestream tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Central. The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way! So did I scare everyone away from emailing me after last episode? Come on, I'm getting lonely over here. Next person that sends an email to tftalknews at tftalk.net with subject line BotBots will get a few free BotBots courtesy of yours truly.